incredibly boring and overly complex mechanics. Took me 30 mins to figure out how to make a campfire and the other tools and it's completely not intuitive at all because of the aforementioned overly complex mechanics that are simply added to add time to the non-existent real content they currently have. Ow, me. Ow. Ah. So Nightingale's this rather unique survival crafting game that's currently in development. And some of us who play noticed its review section on Steam is kinda weird. And not in a good way. I mean, just look at these. What even is this? I was a pretty big fan at first. I waited for its release eagerly. But the build limit really makes me not want to play. And I haven't in months. Okay, that was a relatively valid complaint at launch. This completely oblivious dude literally posted the review on the same day that the game released a huge build limit increase. Did they take it down after realizing their mistake? No, no, of course not. They're oblivious. Game looks like fun, but devs do not allow for low sensitivity past default. Makes game unplayable for me as sensitivity is way too high. If it is changed, I will change my rating. This may seem like a minor issue to some, but this is basic control UI, and it ruins my experience in the game. Sadly, there is something going wrong with my GPU only when I play this game. Ever since the update, I can no longer play without it hard crashing due to GPU overheat. Even with undervolting and turning everything I can down to bare minimum hasn't fixed it, shutting my computer off completely. Apparently, this is a common issue with this Radeon RX 5700 XT card and also having latest drivers, old drivers also does nothing. So I can't recommend this game until they fix this weird overheating GPU issue. Hold on, hold on. So the problem's the GPU? Dude, go tell AMD. Open a ticket with them, give them a review of their <laughs> product. I mean, uh, it's valid criticism. It's just aimed at the wrong people, you know? Hey, you know something? It's kind of funny that a bunch of graphically intensive games these days share the same crazy performance issues. Wonder what they got in common. And I wonder who the root cause is. I don't know. I just don't know. Other than how this game looks, it's an indie game in every way, and not the good kind. Total clunk, both graphically and gameplay-wise. The game explains nothing to you, just getting into the game is super frustrating, worse than any survival craft game I've ever played, and I played a lot of them. Tons of frame skips, constant goofy enemies spawning, constantly attacking you while you try to learn the game that all die from one to two hits. It's like they tried to make an Unreal Engine resource into a game in five min. Return. You know what? Fair. I mean, just look at this clunky gameplay. Disgusting. FOMO Twitch drops. Also, when using the random generation for lineage, the game will put male and male as a couple, or female and female. Last I checked, your lineage does not come from the same two genders. Game has woke elements. Love the devs' priorities. Hitler stash, but no full face beards. Trash game. Seriously, dude? That's what makes a game good? Not its like storyline or mechanics or graphics or anything like that, right? You know, this kind of reminds me of a certain kind of gamer. You know, the kind that likes to complain that female models aren't hot and sexy enough. Yeah, that kind. You're telling me this samurai looking dude isn't bangable? Get the f*** out of here. Could be good, but the devs are proving that they do not value your time. After all hours spent grinding and building, a server-wide reset will be coming soon, erasing every player's bases and progress. Even if you are interested, I highly recommend waiting till well after full release to buy. 
You know, I've noticed a lot of folks who complain about wipes are the greedy sort of person. They just hate the idea of losing their stuff. But seriously, this is the wrong game to be greedy in. Tolerance was known until your grasp extended reach. Greed in the face of power. And then there's some who think it's a total waste of their time, as if somehow a wipe takes away their 425.3 hours of enjoyment away. Forever. Folks, wipes are a thing that developers do so that they can update their game, like with as few problems as possible. Seven Days to Die had something like 21 alpha versions and each one came with a wipe. Escape from Tarkov wipes every few months and it's basically on a schedule. Star Citizen used to wipe with every patch until, like, long-term persistence was implemented. And even then, sometimes they got a wipe. You know, the devs do it to improve their games. They're literally valuing their players' time and giving them more of the game. Piece of f***ing game support is f***ing. Everything is f***ing. You can't play without constant stuttering and freezing every in 10 min, you can triple the game's rewired specs, you're regardless, thanks for wasting them money and deleting 400 hours character, you messed up. Okay, okay, alright, first things first, just breathe, breathe, but I want to get one thing straight. This person has put in 600 hours in the game, but they hate it. No, no they don't. No one puts in that many hours in something they hate. I see someone who desperately wants to love this game. But it's kinda clear their rig just barely meets the minimum required to run. The game really isn't the problem here. The problem is they rage their way into the reviews and blame the game for something that's entirely under their own control. And what I mean is, if you start seeing red, just put the game down. Walk away. Come back after you've cooled down. And in the case of some folks, you know, after a couple upgrades too. Just saying. Think of it this way. Every single PC gamer, every like all of us, we have made an upgrade to our rig specifically for one game at some point in our lives. That's the truth of it. Nightingale is the kind of game that's geared towards certain folks. Most of us are bookworms and portal fantasy escapists and very loving fanatics. There's tons of us into fashion and architecture and the joy of discovery, which the game just it just drowns us in it. And it's totally okay not to like any of it. If you're not into it, no worries. And also, no need to spend energy making weird, unhinged, ridiculous reviews. You know, just move on and play another game. Or go make something, like, with your hands. <sighs> anyway, if you've seen hilariously ridiculous reviews for other games, tell us about them down in the comments. Thanks for watching, see you in the next one. Peace.